Hello, traders. Welcome to TradingWithBill.com. It is a Wednesday, June 13th, 2018. We're in Thailand. It is raining. It is storming. Uh, it's still cloudy out there. What a night it was last night. So I got to tell you. So um, last evening, it's about, I don't know, it's uh, 45 minutes before New York opened. I'm at my charts. I'm doing my thing. You know what we all do. And all of a sudden, the storm comes in. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you. This lightning hit, I must have jumped 10 feet out of my chair. <laughs> I'm only five foot two. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, quite that. Needless to say, I did not make the New York session. Um, the computers were shut off immediately. Everything was shut down. And um, yeah, I sat in the dark till, 10, till 9, 30, 10 o'clock before I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. So I missed New York. So I come to the charts and I see that the dollar... Uh, became very strong. We'll talk about that in just a second. So let's see what's going on here. Um, uh, what do we got? We got South Korea is on a holiday today. Um, Aussie has West Park consumer sentiment about 47 minutes from now. And RBA Governor Low speaks today. Now, I normally don't speak about uh, speakers, but Low doesn't speak very often. <laughs> At least I don't see him speaking very often. French, we have non foreign payrolls today. Uh, no forecast. Spanish CPI, HICP today. Uh, the Swissy has PPI um, for May today. The U.S. has IEA monthly report. I'm really not sure what that is, to be honest with you. Then we get down into the pound, and they just got a whole bunch of stuff going on. However, the big one is going to be the CPI um, year on year for May. CPI month on month for May. Then we got PPI input month on month, year on year. Then we stay in the European session and we head into industrial production for the Eurozone. And Germany has its 10 year Bund auction. And Eurogroup meetings, which are always tentative, they're going to speak when they want. Um, moving right along, so we've got quite a bit of stuff going on. PPI out of the States today, PPI month on month for May. Um, Crude oil inventories as usual on a Wednesday. Crushing crude oil inventories as usual. So pretty full, pretty full day today, um, data wise. So the rest of the week's pretty busy data. We got we got a lot of stuff going on. Of course, it's Wednesday for for me. For those of you who are on the East Coast, uh, you know it's um, six forty seven. Um, in the morning for me, that would be 1947 on Wall Street on a Tuesday night. But of course, your Wednesday, uh, the Fed comes out. We're expecting a 0.25 basis point increase. <laughs> I don't like that, but it doesn't make a difference if I like it. Not. Now, why don't I like that? Well, I don't like it because I live in Thailand and I have to deal with um, exchange rates. And most of the time when they up, uh, interest rates, the dollar gets weak. <laughs> so luckily it's early in the month and it'll recover hopefully by the time it's time for me to do my thing. All right, so let's head on over to the charts. So scooting around the charts today, this is what I saw by the way. That's how I, I this is the only chart I looked at was this Aussie and I see this Aussie with the sell off here. I'm like, ooh wee, what happened in New York? But uh, so whatever happened, happened. So this sold off. And this, folks, just looks like an awesome trade opportunity. If we take this and take a look at this, let's do a fib here. And if we just fib this swing, right, just fib that swing there, right, right at this uh, 618, 50% 618 there, yeah, we're going to take that to the downside, right, right there, boom. Smack that baby to the downside. Now, if you wanted to say, well, William, let's do something different and buy it. I'm all for it. I think this is a good buy where it's at right now. 75, 70 in this area. We can buy this and take this all the way up to 7,600. So, you know, you, you can basically get a nice 45 pips out of this trade to the upside until it comes to, gets to our sell area. If it passes that 55 EMA at the 618 or the 50% somewhere in there. So yeah, I, I'm not against buying this. This does look like a nice opportunity to buy this. Is it going to get done in Asia? We would hope so. We would hope to get this done in Asia. Because I surely would like to be at London Open at the 618 uh, 7590, right? 95, right? If it overshoots to 7600, that's okay, folks. 
you know, what if it goes to 76.10 up to 200 exponential moving average? That's okay. We're going to sell it, right? We're going to sell it. That's all resistance up there. You got EMAs up there. They're tangled together right up there, right? This area here, they're all tangled together up there. So, yeah, this is this looks good. This looks all right. Not, no worries there. Let's take a look at the Euro... Aussie? So this is really in the sideways mode here, really not doing a lot. What happened to my, there we go. Um, not doing a lot of stuff there. You know, I'm, this did dip down though, you know, you look at this, right? Always expect an overshoot. When I trade, I'm always expecting, if I pick a level, I always expect an overshoot. Here you go. Here was your overshoot to the downside, right? You wait, you wait, you wait, right? This 30-minute chart, it's almost four hours of wait, four and a half hours of waiting here before finally it comes back up. It acts, it breaks the 200, retests it, that's that red candle, and boom, there she goes to the upside. This is so typical, and it's, it's nothing unusual, really nothing unusual. This is a good move here. Um, however... That's not my trade plan. <laughs> my trade plan is I want to sell this up here at 55.60, right? I want to sell this. I want to take this to the downside. There's really no buying opportunity. There's not a double trade here. If you were going to do that, and for those of you who got it, it's a good job taking it off this 200. This was, you know, this was a shot here. This was absolutely a shot. And that looks like that, that was um, really early in New York. Right, this this move here, and then just shoot it to the upside. And this looks really nice. This looks like this was a good, good trading opportunity to go to the upside. So you got in this at you know, uh, fifty four uh, forty somewhere in there, and now we're at um, fifty five. Right, so you got sixty pips out of this trade if you if you ended up taking this trade to the upside off that two hundred exponential moving average, and of course the ten is sitting right there with it. Really nice. No trouble going through the fifty five EMA. Even though I wouldn't have thought that, because if you look left of the chart, we got some really nice, at that point was resistance. It just broke right through it. Humbled around there at the 55, retested it. Boom, there she goes, continued to the upside. What's it going to do? Well, who knows? But there's nothing to do here as far as we're concerned, as far as a trade. We don't have anything. Absolutely nothing. Let's take a look at the dollar CAD. Wow, what's the matter? My nose is itching. Maybe I'm going to make some pips today. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, dog cat. Ooh. <laughs> well, okay, so let's, you know, this is a good thing. We're coming up to resistance. I like that, right? We're, you know, right? Here we are at this 1327, right? But you know what? Do you really want to do anything there? No, 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 no. We need this to pop up to this 13. 30, 40 area, 30, 40 area, and then talk to me, and I'll be more than happy to take you to the downside. You taking it to the downside here, folks, you got a fight on your hands. Look at this left of the chart. There is just junk, more junk, and more junk. You know, you're probably going to bounce off this 55 looking back. It's respected this 55 EMA the whole way. Yeah, so there is nothing to do here. This thing has got to really chop its way back and get up to this 34 area so we can sell it. Now, what do you say? Well, William, I want to buy this. Well, buying it's okay. Do you want to buy it at the 200? Well, I don't think so because it, uh, 29, okay, at 1.30, you're in a mess, right? Here's a mess here. 29.80, you're in a mess here. You know, you got all these levels here that I really don't like. You know, I, there's nothing here that's very interesting. However, I do like this down here. Oh, come on, Bill, don't do it again. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I do like I do like this level here. Right? And I would say, listen, this is not a bad buy, but it's not going to happen today. This is not going to happen today, my friends. Yeah, this is just not going to happen today. Okay? I don't think this is going to drop all these pips to come down. But it's something to keep on your radar. Listen, if you want to shoot it off this 200, that's fine. I wouldn't shoot it off this 55, though, to the upside. I just think you're in a mess there. If it retested the 200, you know, I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, 
you know, probably the thing to do would be to fib this, right? Just fib this whole thing here and see where we're at. So if you fib this and we say we take it all the way down here, we'll pull that over a little bit just for scenic. There we go. You know, so if you took it off the 200, you're at the 50%, right? You're about the 50% level to buy it there. And and I, I'm not, I mean, it's not, it's not something I like because you're really coming into some resistance right above it. You know, I don't think it's really, you know, I think it's like a 20 out of, you know, it's a 2 out of 10 chance that this is going to work and get you some profits. Unless there's some data that helps you push it along here. But I'd much rather get it down at 29.25 or 29.30 and then buy it and take it to the upside. Uh, we'll just take a little quick peek here, being at the pound. has so much going on today. Here's our pound trade from yesterday. So what did this do? This actually came up to the 786, eight, eight, huh? Look at that. All the way up to the 786 and did its mojo, right? Now we're back down here. There is nothing to do here, folks. This would have to really come back down in this 3350 area, which is not bad, right? And we'll take it to the upside. So we can, you know what? We can, act, no, we'll get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Too much stuff on the charts. Yeah, so, you know, if you want to buy this at 3350, I'm okay with that. Again, you got a lot of stuff left to the chart. There's no wide open space here, folks. This is going to be a fight. But you're going to be able to get up to 3380 before you're going to get stuck at this 55 EMA. And at least you're going to be 20, 25 pips in profit. You know, get break even plus five. You know, you're safe if it decides to bang on you a little bit. Um, if you get in at 3350, your stop's going to go with 3320, 20, you know, 33, yeah, 20. Give it 30 pips, right? 20, uh, 20 pips, 30 pips somewhere in there to play around with you, and then just and take it up and grab what you can get, right? This sure isn't the market where you're going to keep a trade in there for two or three days, right? This is a market where we're going to get in this and get out, right? We're going to get our 20, 30 pips, get in, get out. You know, I only want to be in the market two to three hours, and I want out. I don't want to hang out. don't want to hang out. I want to become, I don't want to come married to the pair. I just want to get my pips and get out. Um, scalpers are loving this market. This is a scalper's market. Look at this. Look at this right here. Do, 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 do. Right? Look at this here. This was this not the trade right here? Look at this. Come on there, buddy. There you go. Right? Was this not the trade right here? Resistance all the way across. You see this big candle news apparently. Right? Comes on up here, bada bing, bada boom. Comes up, right? Left of the chart, resistance 34.20. Gives you a spike. Gives you red candle, boom, you're short, your stops 10 pips, maybe 15 pips, and this thing just takes it to the downside on data. To me, I think it's data. I could be wrong, but looks like to me it's data. Now you got two hours of really nice downside moving, really nice, nice trade on that one. Well, traders, it's time. Yesterday's video went a little long. I, was, I think it was a, just a, uh, close to that 14-minute level, which is too long. I like 12 minutes. Is my is my mode all right so here we are dollar index so you know this was pitiful yesterday at 90 9350 now we're at 9383 but it did spike up here right so we got up to almost 94 so we're gonna mark that level right it's just a mark keep an eye on what's going on there I do like Ricks by the way I've told you that before and we're gonna get in there we we'll just watch this now right we want I want the dollar index to be strong 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 Right? So you remember I said at the beginning with the Aussie dollar that the dollar got strong in New York, and here you go, boom, 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 all the way to the upside. Pretty quick, right? Two and a half hours, this thing shot up here from 93.50 all the way up to 93.90, right, in two and a half hours. So that was a big move. That's why we saw the dollar strength across the board there, and that's why we ended up with what we got. So traders, that's the dollar index. Keep an eye on it. Use it. It's a great tool, especially if you're doing the euro dollar or the pound dollar. This will help you out. Use anything. You can use anything you want. Just make sure you're watching the strength and weakness of the dollar. Traders, thank you for being with me uh, on a Wednesday here in Thailand. Rainy Wednesday. We will see you tomorrow morning in Asia. Always remember to trade smart, not hard. Catch you later, my friends. Have a great day. Bye-bye.